Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I've got uh, kind of a cool video I've been working on here over the course of several nights. Uh, I'm finally gonna get a video put together and share with you the dark defense lights. Video's probably way overdue. Uh, I should have maybe done it as I was working in parts, but I kind of wanted to get it to more of a completed state before I shared it all. Um, and let's be honest, I'm probably not at a completed state, but I've got a good setup with uh, several of the dark defense lights on the car. So, you know, let's take a look at them. This video has come together over the course of several nights and several pieces of video that I'll, I'll run through here. I want to give a shout out to my friend Josh. Uh, his Instagram is Mittentrek. If you don't follow him already, check him out. But he helped with the drone videos uh, that you're going to see here in uh, some of those night shots. So before I jump over to doing the actual night video, what I wanted to do here today in the daylight is give you a quick run through of where I've ended up with my light setup. If you've been following the build for a while, you've seen this setup. This is the Rally Innovations light bar. Uh, real easy to mount, fits with uh, skid plates. Uh, so that makes it a, a real simple platform to mount a handful of lights on. Now the from Rally Innovations, the cross track version comes with two, two holes drilled down here for lights. My DDL7s are on a extension because they're so big that they would bump against the grill. You could drill your own holes, that's a possibility. Certainly, no people have done that. Some of the different models, the Outbacks, uh, are set up a little differently with the way their bar routes and where their holes are. But for me, this has been kind of a static setup. I like this setup. I did change out the bottom lights. They used to be uh, just a DDS4. Now I've got them as a DDS4 Pro. Just to give me a little bit more illumination down there. I took these off for a brief period and had a light bar here. And I didn't like the look. I do like the round uh, look. It's kind of that classic, uh, I guess, rally style, for lack of a better way to put it. The DDL7s are the first set of lights I put on the car uh, for on dark defense. I've had them on for quite a while. They've taken a lot of miles and quite a beating. In fact, my right side, I, there's a scuff across the lens. That's from that light uh, taking a deer hit. So very well built, durable lights. Uh, haven't had any problems with them at all. They are a white LED spot and throw 10,000 lumens uh, in a pretty much a dead straight, pretty tight beam, uh, and it goes a long way. You'll see that later on. Down low, the DDS4 Pros, uh, and I have an amber lens in those and the combo. So that's a very orange uh, kind of lens, really nice in snow and crappy weather, things like that. So that's been kind of my go to front configuration uh, for quite a while. So moving on here to the ditch lights, uh, over the course of time you've maybe seen, I did have my own set of ditch mounts that were mounting under the hood. I didn't love them there. I was trying to kind of re-engineer some things and just didn't like the way that they, they were fitting up here. They're in my field of view. Um, some people really like them up there and that's fantastic. I just didn't. So. I came across this bracket, which is made by SMK, and I like them so much that I switched over to them. I've recently uh, got set up and working on a deal with Steve from SMK, and by the time this video is up, some of their products will be up on my website. Uh, so I'm going to be a dealer for SMK. Really, really like this spot, really like the design for it. So what I have here is again a DDS4 Pro. It is 
like on the front it's the amber combo for right now that's what i was running for the winter i'm probably going to switch this over to a white combo uh, for the duration of the summer probably will do that here relatively soon so that's what's on there now then the other relatively new addition is the ltx 40 light bar from dark defense up here which is mounted i just drilled holes through the basket one of the reasons i like having a cheap basket because i don't mind drilling holes through it and i've got that up there i don't know that this is where it's going to stay i think i am going to switch to the rally innovations uh, light bar mount which you drill in here and it brings the light bar out uh, here i'm gonna i think i'm gonna give that a go there's a ton of wind noise and even a whistle from having this here and i'm sure that it's you know air getting pushed through narrow spot here and this and that so i think that's going to get moved uh, but for now it's there it may be there for a while before i get around to moving it fantastic amount of light that that throws out i'm really happy with it especially at the price point that these are um, so what i've done and what you'll see when i get to the the night video is i've really kind of complemented the beams and where they point and kind of how they they operate and even using the whites and the different colors the whites and the ambers you know i can kind of fill in different things uh did, you know whether it's dusty or not dusty if i'm in tight woods then i don't need some of the things that are you know covering wide areas such as like the dish lights the spots and the light bar are great for a lot of illumination straight out ahead of me uh, so there's just some different options that i can run based on the different lights that i've got configured so with that let me get into the night videos and let's see these lights in action Starting out here with the Dark Defense DDS4 Pros. Currently I have a orange combo lens in these. They are mounted down very low on my car on the light bar. So you see it's a nice fill in on the trail. Uh, not as much upper illumination, uh, partly because of their positioning. This is a nice light for if there's other traffic around, uh, although not street legal. Um, I do use them in situations where you know, visibility is, is limited on the street uh, and the high beams are reflecting back too much because the amber really does uh, cut through that. So I use them limitedly on the street Oh, but they certainly are not a street legal light. Okay, this next light is the DDL7. So these are the seven inch uh, white LED spots. Um, these are what I refer to as my big rounds. They have that very much kind of classic rally style appearance. Uh, that I've kind of come to really appreciate. I almost took them off the car and then uh, I didn't like anything else in that position, so they went back on. Uh, they throw a nice light. You can see in the video there, you know, we're getting illumination at the top of that tree. The tree is pretty tall, I can tell you that. Uh, from here where I am, that tree is about 785 feet uh, from when I measured it. So, you know, it's a very tall pattern, uh, but as you can see, you know, it's pretty tight. So it's definitely a spot uh, type of illumination. These are really great on the trail, especially a tight trail where, you know, you're not getting a lot of left and right visibility anyway. Uh, so 
I run these a lot at night uh, when I'm out. Very, very rarely would I ever turn these on uh, on the road. They certainly are not street legal and uh, having stood in front of them, uh, they will completely blind anybody uh, should someone come over a hill or around the corner and have to look into these. So I do not run these uh, on the road pretty much at all. All right, up next here is the 40 inch LTX light bar from Dark Defense. This is the single row. So it is the, uh, I guess, smaller of the two 40 inch uh, light bars. Now I also, as I turn this on, you'll see that I have my awning now mounted. I'm getting a little bit of a kind of a funny root block on the light uh, to the side uh, from the awning. You'll see it's a a somewhat focused beam. Uh, you know, again that tree that you can just kind of see the edge of illumination wise. I can tell you in person it is lighting that up a little bit better than you can see on the camera. Uh, but that's kind of right at the, the edge. You can just kind of make out the tree line behind the tree that's there. And I can tell you that tree line is about 1800 feet. I'm not positive that you're seeing that through the video. Uh, so you're not getting detail at that distance, uh, but you are getting kind of illumination. Again, it's a fairly focused kind of spot beam uh, where I have it aimed is you know, out in front of me far enough to get really good illumination on the trail uh, and you know, for reaction time. So that's, that's about the distance uh, that I like them uh, to be aimed out there. Now, typically, you know, what I would be running if I'm off road would be some combination of these three. So I could have the white added in uh, and be running those two. You see now, you know, there's the illumination on the tree is much better uh, running the two together. If I drop the light bar, you know, you kind of lose some of that from the, the, the white spots. Um, but when you put them in together, that's a real nice uh, spread of uh, light out there. And with these all going, you know, the DDS-4s, they don't provide a whole lot of extra um, because of the combo lens. You know, you do, you can see kind of a little bit more to the, the left and right, um, but not a lot because, you know, the light bar and the DDS-4s are so much brighter uh, than the, the Pros. But having the different options gives me the ability to, you know, use them differently. So, you know, in inclement weather, the DDS-4 Pros will really fill out um, right in front. And the light bar, you know, gives me that further illumination. So if there's a lot of dust in the air, snow, rain, you know, where I don't want to have the whites on, then again, these two together gives me a real nice uh, coverage. The other set of lights that I'm running are my ditch lights. And you can see, you know, these are providing a much wider field because they're mounted here on the SMK brackets behind my mirror. You can kind of see that now. And they're aimed to the side. Now, some people aim them much more to the side. Uh, I have them kind of at this, I don't know, it's more of almost like a 30 degree angle. 
because it seems like most of the time when I'm running them, what I am looking for on rural roads is deer that are getting ready to run out in front of me. So I kind of pick this where I would like them to be uh, to give that kind of forward view. You know, if I'm doing 35, 40, 45 miles an hour down a dirt road or down a rural road uh, so I can see if there's deer or something that are coming across the, a field and get ready to jump out in front of me. Uh, some people like them spread much wider and you know there's situations where there's big advantages to that. I will say typically in the winter when I was using them for in really bad weather to help find the edge of the road I had them at a higher angle uh, and that was beneficial in really heavy snowfall. So you know, I may shift them back a little bit steeper angle. It kind of depends on uh, what I'm doing and what the usage for them is. So looking at the illumination from the front, now I'm kind of standing right in front of the, the ditch light at the angle that it's on. Uh, so that's why we're seeing that. Uh, if I engage the DDS4 Pros, we can see that's them there. Uh, so as I was indicating, you know, these are very much down low on my vehicle. I do like the way that they, you know, help illuminate that trail and are not so obtrusive to others that uh, might be around or coming down the trail at me. Light bar. And it's aimed a bit further. You can, I don't know if you can see it in the video. I can see it from where I'm standing, uh, where the, the awning is kind of in the way a little bit on the driver's side, uh, just because of where that's positioned. So again, this is the single row uh, LTX 40 light bar. And last, we have the DDL7s. Uh, down there on the front. They are tight together, so it does give a, a tight kind of spot beam uh, as I was showing earlier. It reaches you know, quite a ways down the trail. Gives a real nice beam pattern and a good visibility. That's worth the noting you'll see here on the rear. Uh, I do have uh, chase lights. These are the only lights currently on the car that are not dark defense. These are a Baja Designs uh, S2 combo. And I've, I'm still using them there specifically because I like their format. They're a thin side-by-side uh, -side, two lens LED uh, so it's a real nice kind of small form factor on those. And uh, those are great in bad weather, really dusty trails. Um, you know, from the rear, people can see the vehicle a whole lot better with those amber lights up high. Uh, even though you can see they're pointed down fairly aggressively at the ground, that's so they're not blinding anybody behind me on the trail. Um, but still allows me to run them. Yeah, so I'm not throwing a lot of light off the rear, but just the illumination makes it a lot easier to see uh, the vehicle in those kind of adverse conditions on the trail.
one more view here to cycle through see if this gives any different uh, perspective on the light pattern so I'm just going to start at the top with my DDS or um, yeah start at the top with my DDL 7s and the light bar DDS4 Pros the ditches which will illuminate me where I'm standing really well turning off the DDS or the DDL7s turning off the light bar which is the D DDS4 Pros lit So using my uh, my ditch lights to illuminate me here uh, as I wrap up the video. Hope this was uh, insightful uh, for you to kind of see the different patterns, uh, see how the lights are set up, uh, the way I have them aimed, uh, and get kind of a, a a real look at what the dark defense lights are capable of. Uh, if you've got questions, certainly reach out and uh, let me know. Happy to answer questions and uh, help you understand these lights better. You know, I, I'm i running, as I said, with the exception of the, the Bajas for my chase lights. Everything on uh, Dark Defense right now. You know, the only other thing that I have is the diode dynamics in the fog position. Uh, they may be getting switched out here for something that I'm uh, working on. So stay tuned for that too uh, but i have found and i think many of my customers have found that you know the dark defense lights are solid uh, i actually hit a deer with one of the ddl7s and other than a scuff on the, the lens it's been fully functional uh, all the way through now since last summer when i hit that deer so they're solid lights they're well built uh, i've had them underwater always turned on when I asked them to and done what they needed to do. So from a value standpoint, you can find cheaper lights, you can find more expensive lights. Uh, but my experience certainly has been that these sit in a really nice spot as far as the value and the illumination and the quality that you get out of the, the dark defense. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, hanging out here tonight with me. I had fun. Thanks, too, to my buddy Josh for the drone video uh, that is thrown in here. Yeah, I always appreciate him coming out and doing that with me. If you don't already, um, consider subscribing. Give the video a like, and I uh, hope to see you next time.